Welcome to video number six in the 2024 Haltom City election season series. In this video, we will look at the lies and misinformation from Ron Sturgeon and Hubba used to mislead and con the citizens of Haltom City. Once again, I am Jason Steele, and these videos are to help you make an informed decision about your Haltom City Council candidates for the upcoming municipal election. If you're enjoying uh, better sound from this video, you can thank my IT department, aka my wife, for installing the microphone. Before we get started, remember when we first started this election season's postings and I told you to remember the acronym DARVO, Deflect, Attack, Reverse Victim and Offender. Because Ron Sturgeon and Joe Palmer are as about as predictable as they come, I waited until a few videos were posted and I requested any open records request done on me. And just like clockwork, here it is. Joe Palmer requesting my 1992 job application for Haltom City. 1992. Joe, can you at least try to stay in this last decade? But whatever you think you're going to find, you play it however you want to play it. Just like in the previous episode, number five, where Ron Sturgeon and Cabo ran a propaganda campaign against Kennedale, the same has been happening in Haltom City. Ron Sturgeon and his so-called group Hubba mislead the public to instill doubt in city leadership and division amongst the citizens. You probably don't read his fake news stories, but it is important that you see the mindset behind the campaign against our city. And it is 100% a campaign against our city. So we're going to look at several examples of these lies so that you could see where that mindset lies. From his Make Haltom City Thrive Again website, there is this quote, and I quote, There is no reason we cannot also work to bring small businesses back to the central and southern parts of the city. None of the current council lives in those areas. First off, go back to episode number five and see how Ron did it bringing the small businesses back to Guinadale. He fell miserably. Actually, after he won his council, he didn't do shit for Guinadale, did he? Secondly, let's check out that second part of the quote again, and I quote, none of the current council lives in those areas. The quote is divisive. It presents an image that all of our council members live in the north end of town and they don't care about the south and central parts of our cities. It is also a bold faced lie. This, of course, is Haltom City. And while there is no actual north-south dividing line, 820 seems to be the line most talked about by the malcontents bitching about the north-south division. To be sure that 820 wasn't too far north, I used the railroad tracks as the north-south dividing line to test Sturgeon's statement. Councilman Don Cooper, right here with the green star, is he lives down there. You can't get further, much further south than that than right at the border. Our mayor, Dr. Trong, lives between 28th Street and Belknap. Again, it's pretty damn far south. Councilwoman Marion Hilliard lived here between 28th Street and Broadway. Again, pretty far south. Councilman Kyle Smith lives right here near Denton Highway, right smack in the middle of town. Councilwoman Tiffany Chandler lived here when she was on council. Councilman Walter Grove still lives here, but he was on council. Councilwoman Lynn Thompson, she lives here, still south of that imaginary line. Councilman Eric Morris, south of the line. Councilman Kyle Hance, south of the line. Councilwoman Gabe Ann Zant, south of the line. Finally, out of the last 11 Haltom City Council persons, you finally get one. Councilwoman Susan Soule, who lives north of the imaginary north-south line. No, one, not one council person other than council person Soul has lived in the northern end of town since well before the Ron Sturgeon, star, Ron Sturgeon started his campaign of lies. These lies have actually worked with some citizens. They believe that no council persons live down south, and they believe that they only vote for northern projects, which is a complete fabrication. Ron Sturgeon preys on the poorly informed and the poorly educated, using lies and shameful tactics like this to cause division and sway voters. You saw it with Kennedale and Cabo. You see it here. They just didn't have anybody standing in their way in Kennedale. We've had a lot of people standing in their way here. There's a lot of citizens that are standing up, speaking out. Otherwise, you would have had people on there that, that would have, God forbid, been on there 
for Ron on our council, and we would have been in terrible shape by now, I'm sure. Look at these two pictures for these fake Hubba News articles. The one on the left is from March 15th, 2022. The one on the right is from February of 2024. Looks bad, doesn't it? Stories about empty buildings, declining areas, and these pictures are there to prove those points. But this picture wasn't just used for these two stories. The same picture was used on at least eight different negative stories about Haltom City from March of 2022 through February of 2024. The only problem is this building hasn't looked like this for at least two years before the first time Hubba used it for their stories. On a Hubba post in September of last year, Hubba, whoever it was that was commenting at the time, tried to say that their picture had been taken within a year. Let's see what Google Earth has to say about that. Here's a Google Earth screenshot of Halton Plaza from December of 2023. Notice the green parapets. City trends in Hibbet are open. Hubba used the old tan roof picture of Halton Plaza several times in 2023 for these fake news stories. Google Earth screenshot of Halton Plaza from April 2022. Notice the green painted parapets are still there. Regal furniture is open. This is a year before Hubba claims their solid tan picture was taken. Excuse me. Now, I also want to interject that in these years, 2022 and 2023, I told Ron at least three or four times, why are you using an old picture? He ignored it. Doesn't care. Truth doesn't matter. Google Earth screenshot of Halton Plaza from February 2021. Notice the green par uh, painted parapets are still there. This is one full year before Hubba's first fake news article using the old tan Halton Plaza picture, meaning that Hubba's solid tan picture in their first 2022 picture is at least more than a year old the first time they used it in 2021 for the fake news article. How do you like a side of manipulation with your lies? Remember when I told you to pay attention in the video number five, in video number five, to the four lease sign on the Kennedell Town Square hatchet piece by Cabo. This is what Ron Sturgeon does. He manipulates and lies to portray an inaccurate image of how things are so that the uneducated and our elderly get taken advantage of. Now let's watch some videos taken around town regarding some of Hubba's other fake news stories to further prove how Ron Sturgeon, Joe Palmer, and Hubba lie to attempt to manipulate our citizens with their con games. All right, we got another example of uh, Ron Sturgeon and Hubba, just absolute false news story. Uh, this was from November the 8th, 2022. Um, Haltom City attracts new development, but then landlord reports that he can't get tenants to feel it. Fill it. New office warehouse complex has been substantially vacant for two years. Realtors don't even show the property because of the red tape at the city. All right, sounds terrible, doesn't it? Man, the, the city is just not fair to these poor landlords, right? First of all, this guy that owns this building doesn't know a damn thing about this. Uh, he's not involved with, with uh, Ron or his group at all. So let's go back to that. Hubba founder Ron Sturgeon notes that it has been substantially vacant for almost two years. The second broker who has the listing for this property reports that almost all the prospective tenants who have shown interest in leasing space decide to go somewhere else when they learn about the public hearings or other red tape necessary to get into the building, Sturgeon said. Uh, also, unfortunately, now that the complex has been built, the landlord can't rent it because the city makes it too hard to get new tenants and then passes an ordinance barring many of the potential tenants because they are automotive uses. All complete bullshit all right so we're gonna look and see here's that nice new warehouse right here there's your nice new warehouse right there by the way it's Saturday so they're closed that's why it looks vacant just like that which is probably when Ron came and took his picture or whoever he paid to come take his picture excuse me so I want to ask you folks this why if somebody built a, a warehouse here that they couldn't fill and couldn't get tenants for then why did they do this why are they building a second warehouse when according to ron they can't fill it and they can't get tenants 
Well, the answer is simple. It's because Ron's full of shit. It's because Ron didn't know who was in this building. He didn't have any idea. He's going off of his, quote, second uh, broker, who's this guy named Don Pfeiffer, I think it is up here on the front. Well, Don Pfeiffer has business with Alton City, excuse me, has business with Ron Sturgeon. So I don't think Ron understands that when you have a lot of money and people want it, people tell you what you want to hear. At the time that this building right here, that he wrote that story in 2022, it was 80% occupied. At the time that Ron Sturgeon and Hubba wrote the story that you just saw, the developer with this had already come and filed the paperwork to start phase two, which is what you're looking at right now. So this is phase two of the warehouse. There'll be another warehouse here. And I'm gonna pan across to the front over here off 28th Street. That's phase three, that's next. This building that's sitting here, which used to be the office of the, uh, uh, so we get over here. Gotta watch out, Coco. The building that you see over here, where used to be the office, where that's at, that's gonna be retail along the front, okay? So this development is just rocking along. There is no problems with this development. There was no problem whatever with the vacancies rate or with the occupancy. The developer had the, the occupancy rate that they wanted, which, triggered them to build phase two. So again, unless this is a mirage, all this dirt turning and, and, and development and, and everything right here, uh, Ron Sturgeon is again wrong. And Ron Sturgeon uh, posts manipulative information to try to sway voters that Haltom City uh, isn't going in the right direction. I would say that that dirt turning right there to this warehouse which was uh 80 probably more occupied now since it's been even longer since that story uh, i would say it's going in the right direction even ron's book says that if you've got people invested money in your city in certain areas then then you're going in the right direction so which is it ron is it uh, what you said in your book is it what you said in your your fake news article i was actually incorrect on my video the Higgins Warehouse Project is not doubling in size, it is tripling in size. Phase two and phase three are currently under construction. The retail section along 28th Street will follow that. All right, here we go with another example from Ron and Hubba of uh, Haltom City picking on these poor, poor landlords, okay? Recent Haltom City zoning ordinance results in falling values for real estate. All right, so what is he talking about? Now, first of all, we're gonna look. This is the nice new warehouse. I say new, it was built in like 2017, so fairly new uh, warehouse that's over here off of Lower Birdville and Carson. So here it is, there it is. All right, so let's read a little more of, of how our mean old city is picking on these landlords. It's every building owner's nightmare. Seemingly out of nowhere, the local city council passes an ordinance that bars him from renting space to a large portion of his potential prospective tenants. He's talking about automotive related uses, of course. Knowing that his tenant pool is shrunk, the landlord has to lower rents to close more businesses as tenants in a reduced prospect pool. Uh, I don't wanna read the whole article. Uh, Hubba founder Ron Sturgeon, a real estate investor and landlord who has offices in Haltom City, states, since the ordinance passed, realtors have offered me properties in Haltom City with higher than normal vacancies. Uh, now, mind you that uh, the ordinance was passed in 2021, uh, just, you know, a year after COVID. Um, there's a lot of vacancies everywhere at that point, but, you know, details. Um, Within weeks, these realtors have lowered their price after visiting the city and finding out that they can no longer rent to automotive businesses of any type. Now we're gonna talk about how many automotive businesses have opened up in Haltom City since this ordinance passed, uh, if we haven't already. I don't know, I'm shooting these videos out of order, but there's a lot of businesses that have opened in Haltom City that are automotive related. So again, just misinformation. He cites properties in South Haltom City along Carson Street that have prices lower $300,000 in just eight weeks. In just eight weeks now, this is 2022, October of 2022, $300,000. And he says just one of these lowered $300,000 cost the city $3,000 in ad valorem taxes, as well as the sales tax, employment and products and services. Now you, you would sit there and you would read this article 
this fake news article and you would think to yourself, what is the city council doing? What is the city doing? They must be out of their minds. But then let's, let's, uh, let's add a few important details, all right? This warehouse here would not be affected by the ordinance that involves commercial corridors because it is zoned industrial. It is zoned industrial. It is not in the commercial corridor. So automotive related businesses are allowed in this um, warehouse. And in fact, they are operating in this warehouse. There's three automotive businesses, automotive related businesses, two shops that are working on vehicles and two bit tow are up here in this. There was a detail shop, but it closed down. So the, the accusation or the uh, uh, point that Ron tries to make that this business can't rent to automotive related uses is absolutely false. They are there. Uh, another important detail, this warehouse has never been for sale. Now let's go back, let's, let's look and make sure that we're looking at the right thing. Let's go back to this page. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's the same warehouse. So how does this warehouse that's never been for sale since it was built in 2017, lose $300,000 in value being for sale? That's, that's a great question. That's a great question. Uh, so that's another problem with this. And then let's look at this little part right here. Ron likes to do this trick. Just one of these lowered, lowered $300,000 cost the city 3,000 in ad valorem taxes, as well as sales taxes, employment, products, and services. All right, so what Ron is doing there is embellishing what the property tax rate is. If you have $300,000 uh, in property value, that's $3,000 in taxes if you have a 1% property tax rate. Halton City doesn't have a 1% pro property tax rate. Ours, if you can see the chicken scratch there, is 0.567283. So what that means is even though this building didn't lose $300,000 in value because it was never for sale, um, if it had, which it didn't, it wouldn't have been $3,000 in taxes like Ron likes to point out to make that big, nice round number. It would have been $1,700, $1,701.84 because Haltom City doesn't have a 1% property tax rate. Now, Ron has done this little trick before when he talked about uh, the over 1 billion in new growth that Haltom City has had, when he made a quote on one of his videos and said, uh, that's ridiculous. If they had made over 1 billion in new property value, that's $10 million in taxes and we haven't seen that. Okay, so first of all, again, $10 million would have been 1% of 1 billion. That would have been correct, but we don't have a 1% tax rate. We have a 0.567283. So roughly, without getting a calculator out, that's 5.6 million of 1 billion. So that's a 400, that's a four million, sorry, $4 million mistake, $4 million plus mistake. This one is a $1,300 mistake. And saying that we had a 1% a property tax rate on uh, 1 billion in new growth, that's a, a four point something million dollar mistake. So that's the question that you need to, to ask yourself whenever you're considering whether you wanna believe Ron Sturgeon or not. He claims he's a genius at finance. He claims, you know, he's the author of all these books. Well, I don't know, ghost writers, whatever. But how do you make a $4 million mistake if you're a financial genius? How do you make a $1,300 mistake if you're a financial genius, especially in real estate? Because isn't it your job to know the tax rates? But regardless of, of that detail, this is a 100% false report that warehouse has never been for sale it hasn't lost any property value it's not in a commercial corridor zone commercial and it is currently operating three automotive related businesses inside the warehouse district that it has an act of pure fiction right here but you're supposed to believe him 
that you're supposed to vote for his candidate. So think about that. All right, let's do one more story from the Sturgeon Fiction Camp. And you definitely need to pay attention to the uh, dates. You got May 16th of 2023. Property owners reel from increased issues with inability to lease properties in Haltom City. New ordinance, blah, blah, blah. Same thing. Talking about the automotive uh, use ordinance that was passed in 2021. A new building suited for automotive uses with large service bays that I completed some time ago in the industrial part of Haltom City is still unoccupied, even though I have tried leasing it for more than 10 times, said Sullins. Okay, that's Roy Sullins. Uh, he's a developer out here, and he's talking about uh, uh, a building that he allegedly can't lease because of this automotive-related uh, uh, ordinance, okay? He's not being 100% honest. Sullins called city staff, who told him that although an automotive business could be approved for a conditional use permit in the industrial parts of town, the Haltom City Council was unlikely to allow it. Here you go again, them, them, them Haltom City Council people picking on these poor, poor landlords. All right, so let's look at this building in the picture. Look at that, I got that 2320 circle, 2320 Carson Street, all right? You're like, look at those large bays, just like in the story. It, it, why would they not let them lease that out to an automotive related business? Well, here's that building. There it is right over there, right off of Carson Street. So if a new automotive related business wanted to go into this building, yes, they could not under the ordinance. However, this is in the commercially zoned area. This is not industrial. And there was a clue there for you from Mr. Sullins. Because even though we're talking about this building right here in the picture, this building, let's go to, I pulled all of Mr. Sullins' uh, uh, certificates of occupancy. And let's go to 2320 Carson Street right there. Look at that. All right, remember this date, May 16th, 2023. Look at that highlighted section right there. 411 2023 a certificate of occupancy was issued for a company called Lights On. Well, damn, how are you going to lease out a building that is already leased? May, April, May. You say you can't lease it. It's been leased for over a month at that point. I'm confused. I'm really confused. But notice that it's zone C3. All right. Well, let me make it clear for you. Mr. Sullins was told that the council probably wasn't going to approve a project, but it didn't have a damn thing to do with this building. That building right there. Let's go see the building that we're talking about, actually. All right. Back to the videos. This. This is the video over here. on. I mean, this is the building over here on Volante that uh, Mr. Sullins was trying to lease to his quote unquote automotive related business and you're sitting there looking at it like thinking wow look at those large bays that that big shop in the back why would you not allow them to get a co for an automotive related business here that is perfect for an auto body shop it's perfect for a car repair uh glass repair auto glass it's, it's perfect for those except for that's not what mr sullins wanted to lease this building to he wanted to lease it to a tow company. He wanted to bring a tow company right here. Now, does it still look quite as big knowing that they were gonna to be towing junk vehicles in here all day and night? Because they have to go behind that yard right there. You can't leave junk vehicles out here in the parking lot. They're not gonna give them a CO for that. Because look right across the street. What's across the street? People's houses. What's down the street? Got a couple of people's houses. They're not gonna let them put a junkyard right here, which is exactly what it would end up being. A bunch of junk vehicles that were getting towed in and out of here parked on this parking lot because they're not gonna keep it back behind that lot. It's not big enough. And that's what he got told no about. And the city council shouldn't tell them that they could put a tow yard on a major thoroughfare like this, not across the street from people's houses. But again, you get misinformation from Ron Sturgeon and Hubba, a picture of a nice new building that has nothing to do with the issue at hand. 
to make you think that this city council don't know what they're doing, this, this, our planning and zoning don't know what they're doing, our city doesn't know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. They're keeping you from getting screwed as citizens.